Okay, in today's video, this is part one. Um, we're home on our coronavirus um, extended home stay or whatever you want to call it. Um, I hope everyone is staying healthy and happy. Um, we're going to talk about parametric equations. I discovered that I'd made a video in the past of the second half of today's notes. Um, so I'm going to make a video for the first half and then link you to the previous video. Um, okay, so a parametric equation. Paramet they're called a parametric equation because they introduce a new parameter. And typically that parameter is T. Um, and T typically refers to time. It doesn't have to, but that's often what the case is. And in our pre-cal class, that's, that's pretty much the world we live in. Okay, so what it will do is it will allow us to, um, to write the equation um, x and y in terms of this third variable t for time. Okay, so say in this situation, this is the one on your notes, but I can't really print. Um, what they're doing here is they're telling you that the function x of t is equal to negative 2 t plus 5, and y of t is equal to t plus 2. Sometimes we'll write this x of t, and often we don't. So often, like it looks like this on your, on your notes page, but more often than not, I'm going to just write this, x equals and y equals. Um, you can have other variables, you can have other parameters, but this is the, the kind of the norm. Okay, so what I'm doing here, the first thing I want to do is I want to make a chart. I want to find these values. So when I plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for, for t in x, well, 0, that's gone. This gives me 5. When I have uh, plug in 1, that's negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Notice now my slope is negative 2. This is just a linear function here. Um, so subtract two more is one, and then subtract two more is negative one, subtract two more is negative three. Let's verify. Plug in four here, that gives me negative eight plus five is negative three. Okay, the next part, I just need to have y, I just need to plug in t, zero, one, two, three, four, and I'm just taking that and adding two. So zero plus two is two, uh, one plus two is three, four, two plus two is four, five, six. Notice that had a slope of one. These are just two little linear equations. Okay, so now what we would do to graph this parametric equation is we would graph these x values with these corresponding y values. Notice I need to go, um, so there's a, a grid on your paper, but it, isn't, it doesn't have the axis anywhere. So what I might do, I don't need any negative y values, and I do need a few negative x values. So what you might want to do is decide where to put your axis in terms of, so I'm gonna say this is negative one, negative two. Oh, I don't need a negative three. Okay, I'm kind of changing my scale. Up. Well, I need to go two, three, four, five, six. Okay, never mind. Let's just make this. Okay, so each one of those. So my x value is this is this is one, here's one, two, here's three, here's four, here's five. Um negative one and negative three. Okay, I was gonna change my scale, but I needed to get as high as six and I hadn't given myself that much space. So basically the very first point is gonna be the point five, two. So five, two is right here. Then I have the point three, three. Then I have the point one, four. Then I have the point negative one, where did it go, five? and negative three, six. Okay, now notice with these, um, this is just the equation of a line. Do, 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 pretend I can draw. And it's it's going that way. This is at time zero. Um, so if we had, okay, how do I want to explain this to you? Typically what happens is that we see these problems in real world situations, okay? And so it doesn't make sense to have something where time is negative. Um, you'll see this as we're kicking a, a ball, we want to know its, its height and its distance down the field. We, um, we see these, um, in particular in my IB classes, where you've got a ship on the ocean and it's traveling at time zero, it's at port A, and then it starts going in this particular path. Um, that's how we often see these parametric equations. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to talk about where it was when time was negative. Um, but th these are points now on a line that would, and that line does include those points. Okay, um, so here we have plotted those points um, and we're starting at zero and we're moving in that direction. Okay, so the next little bit here, is, the next thing that they want you to do is, well, sometimes it's not helpful to have it Sometimes it's helpful to take this parametric equation and put it back in the equation that we're used in the form that we're used to seeing. Okay, and so we would call that either rectangular or we would call that Cartesian. 
after Rene Descartes and, you know, the Cartesian coordinates. Um, and that's what you've seen your whole life, well, since Algebra 1 at least. Um, and so what I would do is I would take this, I have x is equal to negative 2t plus 5, and I have y is equal to t plus 2. What I can do is I can either solve both of them for t and then set them equal, or I can solve one of them for t and plug in. Okay, so here's what I think is easiest in this particular problem. This right here, if I subtract 2, I have that t is equal to y minus 2. And now I can take this and plug it in for t in that other equation. So I have x is equal to negative 2 times y minus 2 plus 5. I've just taken out the t right here and put in instead what t was equal to from the other equation. I have x equals negative 2y plus 4 plus 5. Right, so far so good. What always gets me is I know the hard math and I can't do the... Okay, so this becomes x plus 2y is equal to 9. This is that standard form of the equation of a line. That's ax plus by equals c. You could also solve for y equals, so then this becomes what? 2y is equal to negative x plus 9 divided by 2. y is equal to a negative 1 half x plus 9 halves. Okay, if you think about this, 9 halves, this is what, 4 and a half, and so this is our y-intercept, and then our slope is negative 1 half. Let's see. This is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Okay, that's promising. And then notice I went over 1, 2, and down 1, so my rise, or I went down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, that is a slope of negative 1 half. Okay, so that does match the, the graph that we, that we got here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit is if we were to, the next problem is going to be a word problem, and there's a video that goes a little more in depth. If you look at the, the notes, you'll see what I'm talking about. And the advantage to using that old video is that um, I used the calculator in that video, and I don't have a calculator at home with me. It didn't um, make it into the quarantine. Okay, whatever. Um, so what happens in the next ones, we're going to start talking about um, we kick a ball at a particular velocity, and we want to know, okay, we've seen some of these things where you talk about the height of the ball um, or um, as a function of time. But we also want to know, well, how far down the field does it go? Okay, so if they give me theta and they give me its velocity, its initial velocity right here, well, let's say it goes 10 feet per second. Okay, if velocity is 10 feet per second, well, this, this value right here would be 10 when the second, when, in one second. This becomes 20 in two seconds. This becomes 30 in, in three seconds. However, we've also got gravity pulling it down, so we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, the x component here and the y component, we know how to find those using our trig functions. Okay, so this is, this is v of velocity, the initial velocity times time that we need to look at here. Okay, so um, so to find my x value, my x is going to be equal to, well, this is the cosine. So uh, cosine of theta is equal to x over v naught t. So the velocity, the initial velocity times time. Multiply this over here, and I have that x is equal to v naught t cosine theta. Likewise, I have y from this little triangle is going to be is going to be the same idea, but it's v naught t sine theta, but you also have gravity pulling it down. So there's more. Okay, so this is not all that we're going to do. If you remember, we would write these equations, um, the, the parametric equation, did I put it in the notes? Uh, no, not exactly. Okay, the, the height the height as a function of time is going to be equal to, it's negative gt squared plus v naught t plus h naught. Okay, so this you've seen in the past, except the g, what we would do is we would either use, um, if it was g itself is that gravity constant, and it's roughly, it's not exactly, 32 feet per second squared. Oh, I lied to you. I'm so sorry. It's negative one half. Okay. And then G is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. Sorry. Okay. So what's going to end up happening here is your height as a function of time is either negative 16 um, T squared plus. Okay. Let's say we've got an initial velocity 
In this problem, they give you um, initial velocity of 62 feet per second squared. Um, but it's coming at an angle, and so then we have to multiply that by cos. Oh, I lied. Ooh, I'm a little shaky today. I'm sorry. Sine of 52 plus your initial height. In this particular problem, the initial height is five, is 2.5. And this, this is the function. This is your height. You know what? I think my next video does a better job of this. So basically, here's the takeaway. Um, well, one, go watch that second video. But what's going to happen is that your your x position down the field is going to be equal to um, v naught t times cosine of theta, and your y value is going to be negative one half g t squared. That's the gravity pulling it down, plus v naught t sine theta. That's how you kick it, and it's going up at an initial velocity and doing that kind of stuff, plus any sort of an initial height. The next video is going to make the calculator um, your friend. The next video is going to talk a little bit more about this. I will put a link to that video and um, yeah, go practice. I hope to give you a few problems um, to get you to kind of figure out what this means. So good luck to you.